record. So yeah, being able to turn your equipment into a creature, and a pretty relevant 4-4 creature, it's just not something we're used to with equipment, so I don't know where to rate this. I th think this is an extremely good card. Imagine uh, an, a creature enchantment gives plus 4, plus 4 for 4 mana. Okay. That's that's a super relevant card, isn't it? If you get in one swing with that. Yeah. And obviously an equipment is better in the long run because you don't get two for one. Yeah. So And then the drawback is okay, you sit there with your fantastic equipment, but you have no creatures, and then that drawback is sold too. Yeah, because you get to make it a creature and block their stuff. Though we know that uh, four man equipments cost four to equip, that's that's really really expensive. Yeah, it's super expensive, and that's where that's the problem I see with it is that uh, you know you have this plate mail out, and you want to activate it as a spirit and block their stuff, but the second you play the you play a creature, you can't do that anymore. You have to equip the creature almost immediately, so you need very very cheap creatures to go along with this haunted plate mail to make it really good. Uh, there was a card like this, except for the um, the the spirit artifact creature thing, in a not too distant set, but I um, can't remember its name. Yeah, I don't remember that. Pretty much only the plus four, plus four for four. Hmm. Not sure what you're talking about. Which card you're talking about? <laughs> No, and I, I remember it from a limited resources review where they said that the, the cost was so high, but w if you activated this, of course, you you probably won and got it to stick. Yeah. So how high do you pick this? Um, I mean, it's still a pretty good equipment as far as equipments go. So I'm probably second to fourth picking it. I don't think yeah. I'm first picking it. But second I can go second to fourth pick too. Uh, what about Witch Stalker? Uh, now we are in, into the, the weird family thing here, right? Yeah. No, no, it's not one of them. It's the festering youth and bubbling cauldron and bog brew. <laughs> That's the the union. Yeah. Uh, now the Witch Stalker is another one of the the color hate cards. Right? Oh, hexproof. Ha! Hey, this was the hexproof, second hexproof creature fight. I thought about. So, whenever an opponent tries to do something during... Cast a blue or black spell during your turn, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at this guy as a centaur courser. A hexproof centaur courser. Yeah, and uh, if this format is anything like uh, M13, I am first picking this guy. He is uh, a primal hunt beast uh, that is one mana cheaper, and then you have this crazy upside, so you don't even have to enchant him. No, it's during yeah. your turn. God, I have to read the card. Okay, yeah. so he's probably never, go never going to get the plus one, plus no, one. No, he's, he's never ever going to get a plus one, plus one counter. So. Oh, he is, but you are going to like lose a creature or something when it happens, so if there is some sort of... Removal during combat to prevent your combat trick. Yeah. Um, but even then... Yeah. yeah. He's still... Okay, he's first pick. 3 hexproof. Yeah, first pick. <sighs> but it is good. It's really good. Was yeah. uh, Mark of the Vampire in this set? I don't recall. I don't think... I don't think so. I'm going to check that out. Let's look it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Suddenly, use the Gather deck. gives me no cards at all. Let's go into MTG Salvation and find Mark of. Yeah, Mark of the Vampires in the set. Well, this is, this is the guy you want to cast Mark of the Vampire on. But it's harder than Primal Hunt Beast, of course, because it's too green. But ah. this guy with. This guy with. But you can hit him with Mark of the Vampire on turn four. Yeah, which is just you game over. You get uh, yeah. a Mark of the Vampire on this guy on turn four, game over. Well, I I am first picking him, and I am looking for, for marks, 
yeah. the, the Primal Hump is Mark of the Vampire deck was really good. Yeah, so I'm going to go here. Happened First pick so is so early. And there's this weird upside. Yeah, so we get uh, the family of cards you were saying there. I haven't actually read these, these cards yet. A festering they look very, very cute. Too cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, festering Newt is, um, of course, the old... It's Festering Goblin, right? Uh, sort of, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's not Fume Spitter, but it's uh, still something that is relevant. Yeah. So what's cool about this is that you can actually... You can play this guy as a 1-1, one -one, and he can actually trade with X2s. Yes. So... I mean, if you get the Bog Brew Witch, which I'm not really... No, I'm not playing Bog Brew Witch, so... <laughs> uh, like, uh, I, I, she's, Whoa, she's, Bog Brew Witch wasn't very good. No, she's... Ah, uh, bad. Because, like, the, the Cauldron isn't very good, and the Newt isn't amazing by itself. It just trades with X2s. Or maybe even X4s. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not that great. So how good is the newt? I I think the newt is okay on its own in a, in a defensive deck. It's worse than a bear, right? Yeah, it's probably it's probably worse than a bear. But it is playable. It I think it's a twenty third card, so seventh to ninth. Yeah. That's where we're going to pick it. And um, Bog Brew Witch, then. Um, well, given that Bog Brew Witch is searching for things that are just not very good, uh, 15th <laughs> pick. <laughs> That's a really weird. So if you have all three, will it get <laughs> abusive? No. Not really. really. No. You will get this worthless cauldron. Yeah, you get this cauldron, which uh, can provide you with a drain life for four. But and you pretty your, much just only your opponent. making an awesome removal spell that consists of three cards. Yeah. It's just it's not very good. I think uh, the only playable card of the three is the Festering Newt, and even then it's not very gr not great. So Bog Brew Witch. Fifteenth. Really sad rare to get. <laughs> yeah. And then Bubbling Cauldron is also really sad and common to get. You get four life for the creature. What? How many lives did you get for the creature with Trading Post? I think Trading Post is also four life. Oh, okay. So this is pretty much a really, really <laughs> bad Trading Post. No, no, this is it costs this two. Is two mana cheaper than Trading Post. Yeah, but, but it's still to bad. get an effect of it, you still have to... Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just move on to Path of Bravery here. Yes. Um, so, Path of Bravery is kind of interesting. It's kind of like a crusade. It's an anthem effect. But you also get a pretty nice upside of whenever you attack, you get to gain a lot of life. Y yes. What was the name of that enchantment that... There was an enchantment that said <laughs> almost this, but you gained lifelink. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the name of it, though. This is, of course, much worse, but that one was very, very hard to race. Yeah. I mean, it's, this, this one's also going to make racing a nightmare, because if you get to 21 life, then your creatures get the anthem. And having an anthem in limit is pretty good. Yes. So, having an anthem that helps you race on a uh, on a board state where you're behind is even better. But if you're behind, is the effect big enough? You will probably be attacking with one, two, three creatures. That's not a lot of life. No, but it could mean the difference in racing and. If you're playing like the blue-white flyers deck, then you're attacking yeah. with all your flyers, and 
if your flyers all get plus one plus one, there's no